Hello. This is an overview of the current state of color management based on OpenColor.io, OCIO for short, in the latest version of 3ds Max, which is a 2024.1 update. I'm going to quickly show what the new options are and what they do. If you want an introduction to OCIO itself, or to the general principles of color management, the online help for maps has a short summary that can get you started. To switch to OCIO, go to the Color Management tab of your preferences, which you can get to directly from the Rendering menu. There are several different modes for color management. The default is the old method, which simply applies and removes gamma. These two new modes are based on OCIO, and they use a configuration file to control the color spaces and transforms that are available. If you have a specific config for your project, you can select Custom and then browse for the file. If you don't have a config of your own, you can use the default config that ships with Max. That's what I'll do for this demo. Once I've selected that, a lot of new options appear. If you're using a different config, you'll have the same controls, but different choices in all the dropdowns. The rendering space is where the light calculations are performed, whether that's when rendering to disk or just for display in the viewport. These are the choices in Max's built-in config. The default, Aces CG, has a very wide gamut, and it's suitable for a variety of final outputs and displays. sRGB has a much more limited gamut, but it's more consistent with older workflows. P3 matches the gamut of digital cinema projectors, and Rec 2020 matches the gamut of ultra-high definition TV. Now, the linear values of the rendering space aren't suitable for displaying directly, and that's where the display and view transforms come in. These replace the single gamma value in the old system. Automatic uses the defaults from the config file, but you can turn that off, for example, if your monitor has a different calibration, or if you prefer not to use the ACES tone map. Untone map can be used to mimic older workflows, where color values above 1 are simply clipped. Log and raw are useful for diagnostic viewing, so you wouldn't normally select them here in the preferences. If you show advanced settings, you can control different windows and screen elements separately. For the viewport and frame buffer, these are just the defaults. You can change those on the fly, as I'll show a bit later. The images that you use as textures probably aren't in the rendering space so they must be converted before the rendering calculations. The input rules help with this by trying to guess the color space of images based on their extension or file path and name. The default rules provide reasonable guesses in many situations, but they might not align with your own naming conventions or the color spaces that you typically use. Don't worry about that. You can always declare a file space manually, as I'll show a bit later. Render output specifies what you want your render to do when rendering a sequence to disk. If you'll be compositing or grading the images in another software, you should leave the files in the rendering space so that the higher gamut and dynamic range are still available. If you'll be displaying the images as is, you can bake in a view transform for a selected display. Or if you need the output files to be in a specific color space, you can just pick any of the available ones. Finally, when you click OK, these settings will be saved with a scene. If you save them as system defaults first, they'll also be used for new scenes. After clicking OK, you first get this pop-up. This is temporary while these features are still a preview. You also have this link that brings you to the Color Management Forum, which you can also get to from the Max Community Forums, as well as from links in the online help. When I dismiss the pop-up by clicking Yes, you can see the colors update in the scene. This is why you should always set up color management before setting up materials and lights. With OCIO, it's best not to use any exposure control. The exposure is already handled by the view transform, and you don't want to apply exposure twice. For the same reason, you shouldn't use any imagers or output shaders that apply exposure or tone mapping for your renderer. The display and view transforms can be controlled independently for each of the viewports. 
The options are in their individual settings, here on the Color Management tab. The defaults come from the preferences you saw a moment ago, but you can change them by turning Automatic off. This is where Log and Raw are more useful. Log is a diagnostic view that can show details in a wide range of highlights and shadows all at once, and Raw shows the untransformed rendering space values. You also have these controls for exposure and gamma. For example, you can decrease the exposure to show more detail in the highlights, or increase gamma to show more detail in the shadows. Just remember that these are diagnostic viewing options and do not affect the rendered output. There are also changes to the color selector. The most obvious one is that there are now two columns of numbers. The scene column shows the underlying color values of the rendering space in floating point format. The display column shows 8-bit integers, which are the results in the display space after the display and view transforms have been applied. You can set values in either column, and the other one updates automatically. These column labels at the top control the appearance of the sliders. In display mode, the sliders reflect the values of the display space. In scene mode, they reflect the values of the rendering space. They also show the range of colors that are valid with your display and view transform. Setting a value outside of this range is not necessarily a problem. Your display will simply show the nearest available color. If you're not baking a transform into the rendered files, the files will still have the correct rendering space values. You can hover or click on the warning icon to see if the values are simply outside of your display gamut or also outside of the rendering gamut. There are also some changes when adding textures. Here for the dinosaur's color map, you can see that it's been assigned automatically to the sRGB space based on the rule for PNG files. If that had been wrong, you can manually select the correct space, but it's actually right, so there's nothing to do here. However, this normal map has been assigned to the scene linear Rec 709 space, based on the EXR rule. That's wrong. Normal vectors are not colors and should not be managed. You can fix that by selecting the correct option, which is raw in this case, but for any map that doesn't represent colors, you can just click the Data Image button which does the same thing with just one click. Now excuse me while I repeat that process for the other maps that have already been added to this scene. Again, this shows why you should really set things up at the beginning. Now that's done, it's time for rendering. The rendered frame window has some new options as well. Just like in the viewports, you can select a different display and view transform for diagnostic viewing. You can also adjust the exposure as well as the gamma. These settings are not used when rendering a sequence to disk. Those transforms depend on what's set in the preferences. However, when saving a single frame from this window, you have the option to apply a different transform if you want. The default comes from the preferences, in this case there's no conversion, but you can override that. The available options are the same ones you saw before in the preferences. Note that the exposure and gamma adjustments from this window are not applied. If your renderer has its own viewer, it might behave differently from Max's rendered frame window. Here in Arnold's render view, you can select a combination of view and display transforms and also adjust the exposure. When saving a single frame from Arnold's render view, you can set options to control whether to apply a transform at all, whether to use the transforms from the window or different ones, and whether to bake in your exposure adjustment. So that was a quick tour of the new color management as it is in 3ds Max 2024.1 update. Give it a try and send us your feedback on our forum. Thanks for watching.